Hi. Today, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the ear. At this time of the year, we're beginning to see a lot more kids who are coming in with recurring ear infections. And that can mean a number of different things. And so I thought that we could start first with just talking about the different parts of the ear. So today I brought a model of the ear. So there's actually overall three parts to the ear. And to show that, this is the external ear, and that includes your ear canal, and that goes up to where your eardrum is. Then we have the middle ear, which is right here. And that includes the little bones that we learned about in grade school, the hammer, the anvil, and the foot plate. Then we have the last part of the ear, or what we call the inner ear, and that includes this part that's called the cochlea, which looks like a snail shell, as well as this area right here, which are the semicircular canals. To explain a little bit more about the differences of these and why is that important, many times you may hear, oh, they have an inner ear infection. Really, when that's happening, most pediatricians, urgent care, or primary care providers are saying that there is an infection of this space right here behind the eardrum. When we talk about swimmer's ear, that area is right here, involving anywhere from here into the ear canal, right up to the eardrum itself. When we have a recurring ear infection, namely the middle ear space, that's this area right here, and that's where the eardrum can get pussed out and bulging. Now, the last aspect of the ear is called the inner ear. And what happens as sound comes in is it comes in, it comes in through your ear canal. This ear, the external ear, is wonderful for helping to direct the sound that goes towards the ear and into the canal itself. That then hits the eardrum, and then that eardrum is a beautiful amplifier. So that, along with the little bones that we've learned about, they take a sound wave and they take it from this kind of a sound wave to this kind of a sound wave and it amplifies it by about 25 times. That then gets transmitted into the inner ear which takes that sound wave and translates it then into an electrical signal via this nerve right here that goes up to our brain which helps us interpret and actually understand the sound that we're hearing. And that's a quick look at the ear. It's a little bit more complicated than that but hopefully this gives you a basis for understanding a little bit more about what's happening inside your ear.